I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this. Oh my god. Well, welcome back everybody to the the ATR Bar Talk segment where we gauge our confidence in NHL topics based on our choice of drink, a beer, a shot, or are you buying everybody around because you're so jazzed up for it? Andre Vasilevsky, five consecutive closeout shutouts to, to, to finish a, a bunch of series, including the Stanley Cup Finals. With that said, and the crop of young Russian goaltenders, the Russian goaltenders will dominate the league over the next decade, and I'm buying everybody around on this one because we know what Vasilevsky's already done. We know Yaroslav Askarov is being compared to Carey Price, which means he's overrated. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know <laughs> that the Islanders wouldn't have gotten past the first round if not for their prized Russian goaltender, um, Ilya Sorokin. And uh, as speaking about Anthony getting excited, and um, and of course, there's a Russian goaltender in New York. I think I'm not sure that they've talked about for the last five years. So Russian goalies, they're they're here to stay. And I've kind of always wondered for years, you got all this Russian offensive talent. When are we going to see the Russian goalies? And now we got them, and they're great. They're they're doing fantastic. Uh, John. Uh yeah, I, I, I'm going to buy a round on this because there are uh, it, it, there's tons of goaltending talent. There's been talented goaltenders that come out over the years from Russia, obviously, going all the way back to uh, uh, Vladislav Tradiak. I mean, we know how great he was, probably the greatest player to never play in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikolai Hobby Bullen was great in the 90s on some mediocre teams, got those Phoenix Coyote teams to the playoffs in the mid to late 90s won the Stanley Cup with Tampa in 2004. He had an historical playoff run in uh, 2004, had three shutouts in the Stanley Cup Finals, was the first ever goaltender to do that, I believe. Um, but, you know, it, it, you, you look at him, Sorokin, Shesterkin, I, I mean, it, Askarov, it, that, it seems like with these goaltenders, and, and I know I can look back to it, and there were times where there were Finnish goaltenders, like in the 2000s, the wave of Finnish goaltenders, your Kari Letnins, your Kari Ramos, and all those great Finnish prospects, Tuka Rask, Hanu Toivinen. Kiprasov. Yeah, Mika Kiprasov. You know, That's the Toskala. Yeah, Toskala. You know, they're, they're, they, they come in waves, it seems like. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite around here on this because I think the next wave is the Russians, the Russian goaltenders. So. Anthony. Uh, easily round, um, you know, Sorokin, Shesterkin, Vasilevsky is still going to be around for a long time. Um, yep. Then you have Ilya, Ilya Samsonov on the Capitals. Uh, you know, we, we didn't mention him until just now. Thank you, uh, Big Blue. You know, then, you know, Askarov is going to be coming up in Nashville in a few years. Uh, so, you know, there's they're, they're not going anywhere. And honestly, I still think the, the players might not go to the Olympics, but if they do, you got to you got to think that the three goalies for Russia might be Vasilevsky, Shosturkin, and Sorokin. I don't think Shosturkin and Sorokin will play just based on how good Vasilevsky is, but um, yeah. I mean they'll they'll probably be on the roster. Um, so yeah, the Russian goaltending is here to stay, like you guys said. And you know, even further, if you kind of look at the uh, the Metropolitan Division, three of them are in the Metro with the Capitals, Islanders, and Rangers. Um, you know, so. It's, listen, I, they're, they're, the thing about them, too, is a lot of them are all, while they have differences, they're all somewhat similar, too. They're just fast-moving goalies from side to side with good reflexes. None of them are really, well, aside from Vasilevsky, but Shesterkin, Sorokin, Samsonov, they're not big guys. Mm-hmm. They're average, they're average-sized goalies. Um, you know, credit to all their goalie coaches that worked with them the years to get them to the level that they're at, but... Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, round here, it's easy, easy. Or did you yeah. see the size of Vasilevsky in that picture with Carey Price? Yeah, that was going he around. Like yeah. he was wearing, I mean, oh, he looked yeah. like he was wearing like a tack dog de- gear. Yeah, yeah. People are questioning whether the the, the legality of that chest pad there. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I, Minamaki I, for the Flyers was a Finnish uh, product. Finnish, product. yeah, yeah. He was, he was, a, he was another pro, uh, promising Finnish goalie. Yeah, but it, it, that, that's like I'm saying, it, 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 it comes in waves. It was the Finnish goaltenders in the 2000s. I mean, the 80s into the 90s had that 
that uh, Canadian and then American they, you know, wave, then they were, that was when the butterflies started coming out because everybody started copying Patrick Waugh. Uh, I mean, so it comes in waves, it comes in yeah. waves. U.S. might have, you know, another wave coming with guys like Spencer Knight. Uh, I mean, you know, John Gibson, uh, you know, John Gibson's already, you know, here at the NHL level, is one of the best goalies in the NHL. And his name is actually coming up in trade rumors, by the way, as well. We'll talk about that a little more later. Yes, we will when we get to the uh, the rumor segment right before the Q&A that we're going to be doing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it is kind of funny with me because you're mentioning that it comes in waves, but the American goalies, it always seems to be it's like one dominant American goalie all throughout. Like, and then like another one just takes the torch eventually. Like from Miller, it became quick. From quick, it's now Hellebuck. Um, and don't forget in, 2000, uh, in 2006 in Torino, there's Di Pietro, but then John Graham and... Um, and some other really bad goalie with was, was the backup that year was a little thin. US. Yeah, they were they were thin that year because they were waiting for that 2003 crop to get up there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the American wave and the aughts, we had that one too. Yeah. All right. So moving on to the team that Tampa Bay beat in the finals, the Montreal Canadiens will miss the playoffs next season. John. I'm going to say this is a beer, but I might lean towards a round because they're going to go back to the division that they were in, and that's a tough, tough division. You're going to get Tampa Bay back. You're going to get Boston back. Uh, I mean, Buffalo sure is going to be in there, but there are going to be a lot of teams that are going to give Montreal a lot of problems. So, and, and Montreal, you're going to lose some guys. You're going to lose Tomas Tatar. I mean, I guess you're going to have Jonathan Drouin back, but Corey Perry, I believe, is an unrestricted free agent. Mm -hmm. I think he is. Um, Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl. I I mean, you're going to lose a lot of those guys from that team. You're going to lose a lot of depth pieces. And, you know, Shea Weber, uh, is he going to be able to continue to turn back the clock? Carey Price was kind of mediocre during the regular season and really turned it up in the first three rounds of the playoffs. So... Are you going to get that from Carey Price again? I don't. I don't think you are. He's getting older. He's another year older. So I think you're going to see a reduction in Carey Price's performance. I just think there are a lot of odds that could go wrong as opposed to ones that could go right. So I'm. I'm going to say a beer here, but I. I lean towards round. So. Anthony. So Phil, I I'm actually going round, and it's crazy to say. It's crazy to think about saying the team that made the Stanley Cup playoffs is not even going to make the playoffs the fall. Sorry, make the Stanley Cup finals, not even going to make the playoffs the following year. But it's round for me. Tampa Bay, Boston, Toronto are probably going to be the, the, the top three in that division. And then you yeah. have to consider Florida came on really strong last year. you got, you yeah. got to consider Florida for a playoff spot. So is Montreal be better than any of those teams? No. I mean, Tampa Bay, no. Despite them losing some players, they're still going to be up there. Toronto, as much as I think they're paper tigers and they're they're a mess, with during the regular season, they have enough talent to coach through the regular season. Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, they're too top heavy to completely miss the playoffs, barring a epic collapse. So, you know, they're going to be there. So, how could you say realistically? How could you say they will make the playoffs? I, I don't. I, what as a wild card? Look at the Metro. The Metro itself has their issues with how many good teams are in it. So yeah, this this is this is a round for me. Um, however, I'll throw out a little bit. If you want to call it a little bit of a hot take, if if the Canadians were going to make the playoffs, I'll say it will be at the expense of the Boston Bruins. But I don't. I still don't think that's going to happen. But that would be my that would be my guess. And the reason why I say the Bruins is Rask Rask is getting older. Um, who knows how much his head's really still into playing the game. Um, and then you know the perfection line. They're the perfection line, but how else? How much longer can they go with relying on one line to carry them through? Here, here's and, the other thing with Boston that that you didn't even mention: who's their second line center? Yeah, yeah, Krejci's an unrestricted free agent. Unrestricted free agent, and I, I just, I, I, I don't see where. I mean, they could upgrade. Maybe could do they Could they go trade for someone like Sean Monaghan? I mean, Monaghan would be fit there. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't have to be the guy. He could be behind Patrice Bergeron, and they could t- eventually take over that role when Bergeron really starts to decline. Mm-hmm. But I mean, who who's their center? And there's there's problems with Jake DeBrusque. 
Mm-hmm. He's got to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. He's in danger of really going south career-wise. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't think it's a big hot take, but they do have some things to address, Boston. Uh, I'm picking up everybody's bar tabs on this, and I'll be very clear about this because there is zero chance. Maybe, maybe uh, you know what? Let's let's give it a point zero one because you're telling me they're going to be better than Boston, Toronto, and Tampa Bay, so they're going to make the top three. And Florida, and Florida, so they're going to with those four this season. And yes, the Bruins are about to fall apart because the top two centers are 35 years old. I agree about that. Um, Zega will answer that question later. Uh, but the other one is that. Then look at the Mets. So fine, I said that he said it, and he took my point. Damn you, Anthony! But <laughs> it was uh, it was. Then look at the Metro. The Metro has got the Rangers, the Capitals, the Penguins, the Islanders. Uh, the, the who knows? Maybe the Flyers figure out what to do. Maybe uh, Carter Hart has uh, any confidence left in him Did to they get set his life. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just come on. It, it, they're going to be better than one of those teams? Absolutely not. And then. Uh, they got they got free agency holes. Is Dominic Ducharme a good coach? We still don't know. He got There's... extended today. You see that? He's the official head coach now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you take your team to the Stanley Cup Finals, you're going to be extended. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's just no, absolutely no way. Thank and of you. course, we always like this endorsement. We got one more, and then we're going to do some honest press conferences. And of course, it's uh, this one's a Mark special because he's got to word it. Sort of like an asshole. But yeah. Aaron Rodgers will play more games for the Packers than Jack Eichel will for the Sabres this fall. Anthony. Um, I got to go round because I, I think Eichel is going to be traded in a week or so. Yeah, so you, you had to think about that? Yeah. Well, because the Aaron Rodgers aspect of it. Who knows? <laughs> really well, if, they, if they tie at zero, I guess. That's oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, around Eichel will probably be, as you heard Dave say, maybe around the 22nd, 23rd, or maybe even on the draft day, because the Sabres probably want that first round pick from whatever team to use um, round. I, I just, you know, and this is coming from someone who is, who's also saw the other side of it and said, oh, well, if the Sabres don't get a deal they like now, simply hold on to him, hope he comes back after whatever procedure he does, plays well, and then at the deadline you trade him. But I think they want to get him out sooner than later, just so they could wipe their hands clean and you know move forward. Um, so round, I think Ica will, will be gone by the time the draft takes place on the twenty fourth. <laughs> and uh, you know, what, you know, what, Phil. I guess I'll go first. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy everybody around, but I will say this is proof that you can uh, reconcile uh, even the worst of circumstances because after all. Uh, I think, I think Rogers ends up going back. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I, as much as I said, I think Eichel should go back, but I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he will be traded, especially after hearing it from Dave Paniota. That's why we all look so dapper right now. Um, and uh, I got to go with that. So, um, yeah. All right, John. Shot, 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 Everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're buying shots here for everybody because both these guys are getting traded. Both of them. They're both. They're both traded. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I called it. I called it before the end of the season. I said Jack Eichel was going to be traded. I said he was going to be traded to the Rangers. I'm sticking to it. I think he ends up a Ranger. I think Aaron Rodgers is gone as well. So neither of those guys are going to play a damn game with either of those teams. And like I told you, you can't go back with this. This is the biggest controversy we've seen. For a player in regards to his medical records since Eric Lindros in 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. You can't bring him back. The bridge is burned. If you bring him back, you risk injury. It's a distraction. It throws everything off. The media will be down everyone's throats asking about Eichel, asking about the injury, asking about everything. It, it, it's just too much. Move on. Move on. Kevin Adams is going to have to lower his price and take the best deal that he has available. Every GM knows it. So Jack Eichel's not playing another game for the Sabres. Aaron Rodgers is not playing another game for the Packers. We're all having shots. This might be some vodka in here. That I have <laughs> That's why I went off camera a couple times. Dave. Sorry, Dave, but I'm a little bit of an alcoholic. No, I'm not 
But uh, well, without alcohol, we're they're totally screwed in life. But we want to know what you guys think. Obviously, put it all down in the comments below. Uh, is Vladimir Tarasenko New York bound? Is Jack Eichel New York bound? Uh, who's going to play more games, Rogers or Eichel, for their current teams? Uh, Tampa three peat. Montreal will miss the playoffs next year. Again, put all the comments and uh, don't forget to like, share, and then also uh, what's that other thing? Oh yeah, subscribe. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Ooh, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.